guys, welcome back. Introduction, blah, 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 blah. So I've had a kind of rough, not like rough couple of weeks, but the, since filming my last video with Charmaine, um, I've kind of just been like nonstop working. It's a really, really busy time for me right now. So I haven't had like the mood to sit down and film. I've kind of been like completely like zapped every day after getting home from work. But even though I'm tired today, even though it's been a hell of a week, um, a little group chat with Aaron, Jing, and Charmaine, um, we're, Pepsi's at the door. So our little group chats right now is just like talking about anthuriums and how we want to grow plants this year. We're bouncing ideas off each other and I thought, <laughs> I'm just like so amped up with plant adrenaline right now that I thought it was a perfect mood to sit down and talk about growth updates I've got going on right now. I've wanted to do a plant haul video at some point, but it turns out I'm just really not hauling plants this year. I have like home things, I, like a big roof project I need to be saving up for, so I'm just like really not spending money on plants at the moment. Um, but I've gotten a few plants and a lot of them are ones that Jing has gifted me so kindly. Um, so I just wanted to kind of do like plants that I've gotten so far in 2022 and some fun updates that's um, planty related right now. So yeah, that's about it. Let's get started. Don't mind Hux, he's just gonna be licking me <laughs> while I go through the plants. So the first update I wanted to talk about, Huxley, don't. So the first update I wanted to talk about is right behind me here. So this is my grow tent that I would have shown in my plant tour. Um, I finally got the light switched out. So this light down here that's kind of like pinky, that's that's old. Um, I do want to get that switched out, but I didn't have enough of the new bars. The new ones here, you're gonna see light coming from both sides of me. And then I have two strips up above. I freaking love these lights. They're not intensely bright. Um, they're only 10 watts per strip, but um, they got a really, really nice color to them it's just like a warm white this whole room is transformed when the tent is open it's so nice so my plan is um, I've already ordered them but I'm gonna get all my exos switched out to this light and I just I won't have so many issues with burn on my aeroids Huh? no yeah so that's the first update I have um, there these are the Barina uh, two foot 10 watt strips. I will leave a link in the description if you're interested. Um, so first update I have, kind of exciting. So this was um, imported as, was it imported as a dark form? But no, it wasn't, it was just Forgetti Eye. This was from Equigenera. So when it came to me, it had quite dark foliage and like almost invisible veins. Um, this leaf is going, it's had kind of a rough time in my mills bow. It's, it was like a little bit bleached and then I think some of this is fungal here, but it's now given me a new leaf and it's an absolute tree. Here is the newest leaf. It's just about hardening off now. It's still a little bit soft. Um, it is so massively tall compared to the other ones. I'm not sure if you can see <laughs> that height difference um, and the size difference. The funny thing about this one is that even though it's kind of dark, the veins are quite white. Like they're not silvery, but quite kind of creamy in color. So I thought that was quite interesting. Um, I'm just excited that this is sizing up because like forgetty eyes just don't size up as quickly as my other anthuriums do. But it's just like constantly flowering. It is putting on inflow right now. Um, this will be emerging soon. And some people have been asking me about um, an anthurium pollination video. So I will attempt that. I think I'm gonna try to get some pollen from Charmaine. Um, I donated some pollen from one of my, for no, this Forget AI actually. I've donated pollen from this Forget AI to her to pollinate with her anthurium that's in flower right now. When that one goes into pollen stage, she'll collect something trade it back to me. So we're gonna try to get hybrids going of those two. And that, the other plant that she's pollinating is some sort of unknown um, hybrid. This one is just my pride and joy right now. It's just like so nicely bullied. 
it looks puffy in some angles. Let me see if I can get a good shot of the texture here. I don't know what this is right here. I really hope that's not fungal right there. But anyway, yeah. My little forgetty eye, it's not so little anymore. And then speaking of forgetty eye, just want to give a little update on the little seedlings that I had repotted in my, I think it was my plant chores video. So they're actually like getting a lot bigger now and the new leaf is showing more characteristics. So this is probably the biggest leaf I have so far. It's not very big, um, but it does have more of a velvety texture than the previous leaves. And um, the previous leaves are, yeah, they're quite matte, but this finally getting a little bit of like a sparkle to them and I'm super excited. It's starting to speed up now that they're in their individual little pots. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm really excited about these ones. They're growing so fast and I'm, I'm just excited to share them, but I just, I do want to wait until they've all kind of grown out. Fox, give me. Maxi, sit. Good. What was I saying? Oh yeah, I, I do want to wait until... <coughs> Buddy! <laughs> I do want to wait until um, they kind of show their characteristics before I decide which ones I want to part with, which ones I want to keep. But yeah, I just wanted to give a little update on my little seedlings. Another Anthurium update. So this one is the <clears throat> Anthurium I was showing. I don't remember why I showed this. Huxley! Okay. Actually, you're going downstairs, okay? Go. As I was saying, um, I think I was showing this because I was showing how anthuriums can be chopped vertically down the stem um, to propagate. Um, and this one was one that like had stem rot down the side and I had basically had to scrape off um, half of the stem um, and it's growing a new leaf. So this is one of my favorite anthuriums that I own. It's like, it's a pretty narrow one. Um, it's some sort of poppy hybrid. It's quite dark, um, very muted veins, and it's got like really nice lobes. So I'm really excited to, to have saved this guy. I'm excited for it to start growing again. Um, I hope it doesn't take too long to size up, but based on the plant it was before, um, with each leaf, it, there's like a significant um, size difference. So. Yeah, just wanted to give a little update on this guy because he has survived. I'm so happy about that. Hmm, are there any more anthuriums? I think that was it for my anthurium growth updates. There's a lot of growth. I'm just like, nothing I'm super excited. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot about this one. I'm really excited about this one too. Um, so this is my possibly anthurium papillolaminum, possibly um, Anthurium papillolaminum, pep, papillolaminum crossed with Dresselari. This looks a lot like what people on Instagram are calling Indopapi. So this one died back to a stump in during a heat wave last year, but it's just a baby plant now. Um, the petioles do have a little bit of like angle to them, but I wouldn't call them square, but they're definitely not circular. Like they're almost square. But it is popping a new leaf right now. I don't know if you can see those cute little lobes right now. Yeah, uh, based on like kind of how easy going they are, I'm inclined to think that this is a hybrid. Um, but yeah, I'm just kind of like following this tag on Instagram right now just to find out if anyone has a definitive ID for it. Jing has a really, really, really gorgeous one. Actually, she has more than one um, and they're just stunning when they get those like tall little bunny lobes. So I think I'm gonna transfer this to Pon um, because hers is in Pon and it does really, really well in that substrate. So yeah, that's my plan for this guy. Um, but I probably will wait until this leaf is fully formed before I do that. Yeah, so I think that is it for exciting Anthurium updates. Um, there's there's a good amount of growth, but those are probably like my most exciting. Let's move on to, I have one alopecia update. So this, this is my Friday deck that I showed in my 
2021 plant favorites video. This was from Jing in December. She gave this to me as just like a sprouting corm. This was the very first leaf that it put out. It's held on. I don't know what this browning is all about, but like for a first leaf, this is pretty sizable and it's just been non-stop growing and like it's held on to every single leaf. It's been such a champ. It's just like one leaf after the other with this one. So it's finally getting some of that like fried egg angle, the lobes, um, and like the, the little scalloped edges. So when I got this fried egg from Jing, I also got another one from Erin, which was also at the time a sprouted corm. So this is it. It's a lot smaller, as you will see, compared to this one. This this seems normal to me for a, fry, for a baby alocasia. This is not normal. <laughs> um, they're living in the same substrate. They're living in the same exo. I just, I don't know why this one is just like so vigorous. Um, but I just want to show an exciting update. So the first leaf on this one was fully green. Um, you won't be able to tell because it's like so yellowy. And then the following leaf after that was variegated but tiny and then it put out another green leaf here but this newest leaf look at the variegation on it it's so nice it looks like the petioles are shortening so that's nice um i don't want this like tall gangly situation um but yeah like i've seen so many corn propagations of fried eggs start out green and then go into like half moons or like very highly variegated leaves. So if you do have one, don't give up because this can very well happen. Okay, next I have some Hoya growth updates to show. So this is one that I showed in my top 10 Hoyas. This is my Hoya Velosa. So at the time, this was the newest leaf and it's Damn it, I thought it was a mealy bug. What the fuck is this? I just noticed this this on the back of the leaf. I can't tell what that is. It doesn't really come off if I scrape it. Oh, it does kind of actually. No, some of it's coming off and some of it's not. There's one on this leaf too, right here. Will it focus right there? Hmm. I don't know, I'm gonna ask Jing. Jing, can you tell me what this is? <laughs> Leave it in the comments. Huh. Well, anyway, um, it's putting out two more leaves. So this one is still actively growing. I just posted a photo on Instagram of this leaf. And then this one is also coming out here. Isn't it so adorable? Little Velosa leaves. It's really hard to explain how soft this underside is. It's just like... Mm. There's just no way to. Oh, this. Okay, when it's on a fresh leaf, it kind of feels like. You know, like dog's ears. You know how, like, this is like the softest fur on their body? It kind of feels like that. Oh, I just love this Hoya so much. Hoya Velosa. Yeah, I think Charmaine's is not doing so well. The only remaining leaf on hers is already, like, shriveled off and fallen off, but. In my experience, um, leafless sticks with Hoyas don't tend to do very well. Um, they, they've all died off for me. Like I've never gotten a, a leafless stick to grow leaves again, even though it's rooted. So yeah, maybe I'll have to chop this one again for her. But yeah, this one's been living in my tent just up here. It's been super easy going and has no issues whatsoever. Yeah, love this guy. And then next to that plant, I'm also growing another Hoya. So this is that Velosa's neighbor. It grows right next to it. This is my Hoya obovada variegated. I didn't, no, I did not import it as a splash, but there's teeny tiny splash. I don't know if it's gonna show. Let me see if I can get the light on it. There's teeny tiny splash on that leaf there. It's, I mean, it's pretty, Pretty inconsequential as far as splash goes, but yeah, I'm just really excited that it's growing. It looks like it's pushing out two more leaves up here. It's doing that Hoya thing. Um, very well rooted in this pond. 
This is Pawn and Orchiata. It lives directly under the grow lights right at the top of my tent here. And it's, yeah, finally growing. Super excited about this one. Another Hoya update. This one has been really tough for me to grow. This is my Hoya Pachiclata. I don't know why I just didn't want to give me any foliage. Um, it used to be in soil and then I transferred it to pond and I think it just needed some time to get used to the substrate. But yeah, we've gotten some nice roots here and it vined and wouldn't give me any leaves, but finally gave me a leaf. Even though it looks like, I don't know, a satellite. <laughs> I'm just glad it gave me a leaf. Um, it's nice and dark. It's still growing, it's still quite soft. Um, yeah, yeah, based on the, the thickness, it, this still got a ways to go. I can't get over the texture of Pachiclata. Like, leaves should not be this thick. This is like, if you've never felt one before, it's like, like the thickness of like, a ceramic cup it's so thick and it's got that like powdery finish to it even the vine itself is like a tree trunk it's crazy I absolutely love this plant I think the variegated one is super cute I'm not like dying to have one but like if I saw one for a good price I would be tempted because I love this one so much even though you know what I do really really like the green one though and I'm just feeling the back of the leaf I haven't grown a leaf so I'm kind of like in awe of this one right now it's feels like almost slightly fuzzy but yeah I don't know why these leaves down here are like so minty but they haven't fallen off they're not they don't seem to be like yellowing yeah this is definitely one of my favorite Hoyas um, I just like left it off my favorites video because it wasn't doing anything for me but now that it's got this little balloon <laughs> I am back in love with it did I say it's Hoya Pachiclata? it's Hoya Pachiclata and then the last one of my growth updates, I just wanted to give a little update on my little self-watering uh, pole that I made for my manjula in a previous video. So um, <clears throat> it's taken well to this pole. It's grown this leaf. Um, it's about to push out another. So it took the transition to soil pretty well. Um, but I do want to update on how well this self-watering system works. So you can kind of, I don't know if it's going to pick up on camera, but you can kind of see from the back that it's moist up until about, let me see, about here. So about, I don't know, two thirds of the pole. That's just using the cotton wick. I don't know why it's not able to get the entire length of the pole uh, moistened, but it can't. I don't know if it's like, um, what's it called? A uh, gravity thing. I do want to do one of those PVC self-watering poles where you like take the PVC pipe and then you coil the rope around it and then you, you have the end of the rope sticking into the top of the PVC and you fill that with water. But I have trouble getting PVC where I am. Um, like I don't know why the Home Depots that I go to they don't offer cutting and it's like this like 20 foot piece um, that I won't be able to fit in my car so I haven't been like super motivated to get PVC but that would be possibly a way to hack this so you actually don't have to go in and manually moisten the moss but yeah other than that though um, the, the, the plant is happy um, it's attached itself to the pole I don't know if you can see this is the worst I don't know if you can see, but there is a root that's attached itself to the moss here. Um, this leaf is not yet fully hardened and I find that they do expand quite a lot. Look how fat it is, it's so cute. Um, I'm hoping by the time it reaches the top of this pole that it will be hopefully this big. I'm manifesting a leaf the size of my palm. Yeah, that's about it. That's all I wanted to update on for this one. Okay, so plants that I've gotten so far in 2022. So you remember in my anti wish list video or wish list, anti wish list, I said I was not going to get any more Syngoniums this year. Syngoniums. I said I was not going to get any more Skindapsis this year. I don't know why I did this. 
At the time of filming that video, I had already agreed to sharing this giant basket with Charmaine and I totally forgot about it. Um, I just got this from her a couple weeks ago. Um, I don't know what to do with it, you guys. Skin dapses just don't like me. It's not going to stay like this. It's going to start running. I guarantee you it's going to start running. So, I mean, first things, I need to get this out of moss and I'll probably get it into like a pond mix because at least they seem to grow faster in pond for me and then I don't know I just have to find like a light spot where it's gonna, actually gonna grow and not run like crazy. I do have a big pot of um, Skin Daps's Silver Splash that is running like crazy. I am so ready to throw that plant out. I'm so pissed off at it. So I know it definitely needs more light than that. Um, I do love Exotica so much. That's why I wanted to share this pot because they're probably one of my favorite skin dapses and when they just like grow really compact and bushy, it's just like so gorgeous, but I don't have high hopes for my ability to grow this nicely. At least for now, it is, you know, looking pretty nice. But yeah, so that's one of the first plants I got this year. Okay, the next one I also mentioned in my plant wish list video. Jing cut her plant for me. The scoundrel. <laughs> this is Hoya CV Joy Splash. Let me see if I can get better light on this. Oh, that's better. So it's looking a little bit wrinkly right now because it is an unrooted cutting, but nope, <laughs> not rooted yet. Um, yeah, it is a little bit wrinkly, but I am pretty confident that it'll be um, rooted without dropping this leaf. It's got a really long vine. Just look at the splash on this one, and it's like, I, mean, I need to put down this light. It's just such a gorgeous fat leaf. It's so pillowy. I just, oh, Jing. I said it before and I'll say it again. Everyone needs a Jing. Who just gives a Hoya like this to someone? It's, I just absolutely love this guy. Yeah, you can see how soft it is right now. Please send thoughts and prayers. All positivity for this plant. I really hope it survives. I think it will, to be honest. But you never know, right? Anyways, yeah, one of the Hoyas that Jean gave me this year. I think this year I will be collecting a lot more Hoyas, if I'll be honest with myself. All right, next one is also from Jing, but this one was a purchase because it is you know, a little bit more hard to find Hoya, I think. This is a uh, Hoya, I'm gonna sound stupid when I say this. Hoya SP Tangamus. Tangam, Tangamus. This is the veiny ancient dumpster Hoya of my dreams. I didn't even know I wanted this plant, but um, she showed it to us and she was like, you want one? And she gave it to me for a really good price. I'm not sure when she imported this, but it is rooted in perlite. Let me, so you can probably see the roots along here. It's not growing yet, but it is looking a little bit pregnant right about there. Oh, she has another one that is like the combination of all the things I love in Hoya. I'm not, I don't want her to cut this for me, but um, I'm admiring this plant from afar. It's called Hoya Clementsiorum Thailand. Is it Thailand or Vietnam? I'm gonna throw up a picture. It's also one of my favorite pictures of all time. So yeah, it looks quite similar to that. Um, it's it's like Clementsiorum, but just like really dark and it's got these like raised veins. I I think these are like my favorite kinds of Hoyas. A, they're really large. B, they're really, really, really rigid. Um, they've, they've got this cool jagged edge and like the veins are just incredible. So I probably will say, especially once this one starts to give me foliage, this will probably be like maybe my favorite Hoya in my collection bold claim but I think it might be but yeah I do need to get this on into like a heavier pot because like 
this like does not stand up on its own. So I right now I have this living in my Mills book cabinet, but um, probably the next time I have energy, I will get this into maybe like a like a like a. Uh, you guys, I'm so tired. Um, like a orchid pot in inside of like a outer pot kind of situation, or maybe just a little glass vessel. I don't. I'm not really sure yet, but yeah, it's gonna. I'm gonna transfer it to my pond mix because my hoyas seem to do well in them. Did I say the name of this plant? I really don't remember, you guys. I'm so tired. Hoya sp tang tanga moose. Oh yeah, I did say the name of this plant. All right, last plant on my plant so far I've gotten this year. This is a Syningia leucotrica. This popped up in my local plant group for sale um, for an amazing price. So the seller's name is also Alice. Um, Alice is an amazing seller and um, local to me here. Um, I'm so happy to have this plant. I've seen it so much last year, but I wasn't really willing to pay the price for it. So I'm super grateful to have found this plant for such a good price. Um, it's living in pond right now and it's like quite a lot of algae because it was living, I think, in some sort of greenhouse. So I do want to get it into like a cuter pot where I can monitor the roots a little bit better. I Full disclosure, I don't know how to grow this plant. Um, Alice advised me to grow it kind of like my Hoyas, let it dry out, give it a really airy substrate, lots of light and warmth, um, and it should do fine. It hasn't grown yet. It's living in kind of my propaga propagation exo, which is like the low one with the light on top. It's living in there until I know what to do with it, but I'll probably like pop it somewhere where I can see it more because this plant makes me so happy. Like that kind of, it's not showing up bluish right now, but in certain lights it does look quite blue. I do think like the fuzzy white hairs on it makes it look a little bit bluish in certain lights. Um, I can't wait till it gets bigger and like more fuzzy. I'm not a huge fan of the flowers on this one, I'll be honest, and I do think that they are pretty prolific, prolif, prolific, pro, prolifically, prolific, prolifically, um, at least once a year. Can you tell I haven't done my research on this plant? I'm just, I see the fuzz and I need to have it, and that's what happened. So this and this are the two plants that I've purchased so far this year. Oh yeah, and the Exotica too. All right, that wraps up my video for this week. Um, next week is going to be another video featuring Charmaine, Erin. We're gonna go to Erin's house and do some plant chores with her. I'm not sure what that's gonna look like yet, but I know that we're going to be repotting her giant bird of paradise. Um, it's probably, I'm, I'm estimating it's about 10 feet tall. She has like really, really giant ceilings and it's just like this tree, you stand under it, it just like towers over you. So that's definitely a three person job. Um, other than that though, I'm not really sure what the day's gonna look like, but I am excited um, just to have a day away from responsibilities and just hang out and be with plants. I'm super looking forward to that. So yeah, that's it for today. Um, thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you have a really nice weekend, a really nice rest of the week. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like it. It would make me very happy and I shall see you in the next one. Bye.